those who are new here, we bought this Sprinter van a couple of months ago in order to convert it into our new home on wheels. The plan for this van is to carry us to the sun and an adventure filled life in Europe and beyond. So far, we've removed the rear ramp, the unwanted panels, tackled the rust, waterproofed the trims, installed a window, a max air fan, a skylight, a visor, built a new floor and swapped out the double seat. And today we are going to be getting our Unistrut ready so we can build a roof rack to hold the solar panels. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Adrian, single father to 13 year old twins John and Ella. Hi. Our journey began in Thailand where I used to work as an underwater cameraman and that's where I met their mom. Tragically we lost her during the birth in Bangkok. I later moved back to the UK to be closer to family. Now, nine years later, I'm home educating the kids and planning exciting adventures. I've always known the transformative power of travel and I want my children to experience it while they're still young enough to want to go with their old dad. We converted my trusty work van into a cozy camper van to embark on incredible journeys. Our future plan is to upgrade to a bigger van and make a more permanent home in Europe. Join us on our journey as we explore the world, learn and grow together. So, these are the lengths of Unistrut we picked up the other week. We've already been up top and measured what we need. We're going to have two long pieces going down either side of the van and then a bunch of the thinner stuff going across the top to hold the solar panels and probably some spotlights. I'm going to show you my plan for the roof. Let's say this is the roof of the van. That goes down to the bonnet there. What we're going to do is, on a sprinter or a crafter, we have little holes along here which have got bungs in them. So we have to find out where the holes are on the Unistrut and then we'll take these ones out and then we can fix a full length of Unistrut down that side, full length down this side. Then we've got the Max Air Fan here. We've got our Skylight here and we're gonna have two, the two whopping great solar panels that arrived are gonna be here and here. So what we're going to do is there will be a cross piece of Unistrut here, a cross piece of Unistrut here, here, and I think I'm going to put one here because we might put a light bar on the front, and I also think I'll put one here because we might have a couple of reversing spots here. Also at some point there's going to be Starlink, I'm thinking, for the internet, and maybe I'll build a little frame so that can be permanently fixed here. And if we're doing that we might even put a little bit of frame here, for something else, who knows what, some tools, uh, a water tank, um, you know, like a jerry can, I just don't know. But either way, plenty of these struts. The good thing about the Unistrut is we can build whatever we want, however we want, and I can even build it on the road and change it and adjust it. So, fantastic. I'm gonna set my trestles up anyway, but it does seem like the weather's changed. It was really sunny this morning, which is what prompted me to do this. But uh, we can still make a start, can't we? These have been sat in this yard for uh, about a week now, so they're a bit grubby. So we'll have someone clean them before we paint them. I'm just gonna see what length we've got. I need 4.2 meters. Now I purposely went and bought the really long six meter lens. They've been trimmed already to get them in the back of the van, but uh, I've got plenty to play with. So that's those bits cut. As you can see, this is the 41 by 41 mil. That's gonna be the two long struts going down. And then the cross members is this 21 by 41. So they're gonna go across this way. So let's get those cut to size. Right, I just started marking them up and I realized something that uh, I can't remember. It might have been Urban Van Life, I think, were telling us about this when they did their video. Uh, so have a look at theirs. Um, because if I mark this at the length I want it, it means these holes are not going to be where I need them to be. So I've got to do it equally at both sides. So I've got some hole in order for when it comes down against here, I can screw through and fit it. It's no good it appearing in the middle there where there's no holes. 
So I'm just gonna have to calculate that out. So. Okay, that took a bit of head scratching, but I think we've got it figured out. Time to cut. Before I cut anymore, I'm going to get up on the roof, I'm going to use these two little offcuts to simulate the side struts and make sure this is going to work. So I place those exactly where the little holes are and then hopefully, <laughs> well, I've massively mismeasured mis that, haven't I? What have I done wrong there? I'm gonna go and get my tape measure. Something's gone horribly wrong. Not bad, just horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, so I brought the wrong piece. I brought the piece I haven't cut yet. Brilliant, hey? This should look better. What a muppet. Now that's more like it. Let's cut some more. Come up here a minute. Right, I have to admit, this thing was an amazing addition to my toolkit. Now I am finishing work soon, and I always wanted one of these, but it was one thing I thought, I'm gonna use it a lot on the van, so I went and had a got one. So if you're interested, I'll put a link below. John's joined us, and he's gonna get the ends filed down. Good lad. Are you okay? Yes. A bit sleepy, it's a Sunday. Last one. This is the last cut. Awesome. Uh, don't need this one. Right, that's the last one cut. John's still filing them. I'm going to start cleaning them up ready for paint and hopefully the weather will be our friend. So just for fun, I'm going to build our roof rack on the lawn just to see what it's going to look like. What do you think, dude? Good. So that is essentially our roof rack. Solar panels in the middle, there and there. Max air fan there. Skylight at the back. Um, maybe a light bar on the front of there. And then a couple of reversing spots at the back there. And then a John here. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, all right, it's been an intense few hours. We're just having a bit of a tidy up. We've just rubbed these down with white spirit now and got them set up ready for painting. I'm just gonna go with it. I don't care about the weather, it'd be fine. So we're just gonna wait for them to dry a little bit. We'll tidy up, then we'll paint and then that'll do us for today. Right, first of all, we're gonna give John a crash course in how to use spray cans. Pass one over here, dude. You can stop shaking now. Right, what you always do, look. Mm -hmm. Try not to get your finger over the top or you're gonna get a black paint on it. Yeah. yeah? You never keep spraying. Uh -huh. You go one way stop, the other way stop, like this. Okay, and that was about the distance away, about six inches if you know what that is. Okay. You got to put your finger out front, didn't you? Just like I told you not to. <laughs> so what did, what did I just say? Keep your finger back or you'll get spray paint all over it. All right, lesson number one. There you go, you only made that mistake once, weren't you? One. Two, three, try again. That's brilliant. But can you see how mine is just like almost, don't waste it all, that's very nice. Yes, lovely. <laughs> Much better, that's the way. Hey. He's ready. Oh God. You start on the little ones. 
You start on the little ones. Look. I'm scared. Do you want to watch me a little bit first? No. In fact, that's it for today. I uh, am back to work tomorrow, so I'm just like to go put my feet up for a couple of hours. But what I might do is I might nip out every now and then and do another coat, but I'm not going to set up camera equipment no, for that. So for I will see you next time I get around to doing some filming. So uh, yeah, check in with you later. So it's only been a couple of seconds for you guys, but it's actually been about a week for us at this end. I've been at work again all week, but as the sun was out and it's looking glorious today, I thought I'd take the day off, otherwise there won't be a video tomorrow on Saturday. And we're gonna get this Unistrut up. And as you can see, I carried on getting a few more coats of paint and it's looking fantastic. Let's do it. So the first thing we've got to do is we're gonna lift one of these up onto the roof and figure out which of the holes we're gonna use. So let's do that. Oh. Now what's gonna happen here is can you reach higher? Can you reach up onto the roof? <laughs> what? <laughs> As if you can, I'm kidding. So from here, I can see where the holes in the Unistrut correspond to the holes in the roof, where we've got these plastic bungs, which I will show you. And we can get a heat gun, and then we can melt the glue on those plastic bungs and get them out. I hope you can hear me okay. There is so much noise going on down this street today. Right, so John is very kindly holding that out of the way. As you can see under here, sprinters and crafters come with these bungs and it's just got a, a glue underneath and we heat them up, the glue softens and we can pull them out. Then we'll put a riv nut into that hole and we can bolt this down. I think I'm going to need John on the inside. I think we need to nip it because it will have uh, like barbs on it. We shall see. John! Yeah. Okay, scratch that. I just ran inside and got some pliers on it and it just snapped off. So hopefully this will come out now. Let's see. Hey! There we go. Right, that's looking good. I can't imagine what a little tiny bit of that glue left on there will do, harm-wise. So now, with the Rivnut uh, gun that I bought, it came with a whole bunch of different sized uh, Rivnuts, obviously. So I'm going to find out which size this one is now. We'll have a quick go with the gun, show you how that works. John's eager to give it a go, aren't you, dude? Um, and then I'll know which uh, bolts I need to go and buy, and I'll order some of those from Screwfix. And as soon as we can get past these street workers who are putting the new internet line in, we'll go out to Screwfix. So it looks like the M6. We're going to try that first. It is. That was easy. M6 is a perfect fit. So I'll go and get the gun and we'll have a quick experiment with this. And we'll get the John as well because he really wants to see it working. All right, we're just going to do a quick experiment with one of them before we actually stick one into the van. John's here with his foot and those guys are making loads of noise on the road. So I hope you can hear us all right. So we open this up, a riv nut screws on there and then we do that and as you can see it's compressed that area which will have nipped onto the uh, skin of the van can you see mm -hmm. cool huh and then all we've got to do is loosen it and then we can unscrew you see that all right unscrew the tool from the nut. So that one's not usable now, of course. All right, those guys have got, <laughs> got like a steamroller out there now. I hope you can hear me. Are we gonna try it? We're gonna try one. So here we go. Can you see this all right? Push that into there. And then we push down on it at the same time as doing that. Unscrew. Ha! 
and that's a river nut. That was easy. So the benefit of using river nuts is that if we were to use bolts or something, we're always gonna have to be able to access it from on the inside if we ever want to modify anything. But with river nuts, we can build the ceiling, the roof inside the van, and this can always be unscrewed and unbolted from above and we never have to be into the, uh, the ceiling downstairs. So yeah, great, there we go. So we can put a few more of those in while we wait for these guys to disappear and then we'll be able to go to screw fix, get some M6 bolts and fix it on. Right, these guys doing the internet lines are just too noisy for me, so I'm just gonna get on with this without filming and I'll show you when we're done, all right? Right, well, I managed to get all of those rivet nuts in and it's time to try and fit the first rail. I have just got back from two trips to screw fix, yes, two, because I went and bought a bunch, a bunch of uh, M6 bolts and washers and then realized that the washers were not gonna be big enough to hold the Unistrut down. So I've been back and got some bigger washers and some even bigger ones to use as a spacer underneath the Unistrut. Because that is a channel that runs down the side of the van, I would like water to be able to flow underneath it and off and away. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap. Um, tell me in the comments if you think that's a bad idea, because I'll be honest, most of the YouTube videos that I have watched where people have been doing this Unistrut roof rack, they didn't do that. I did see one that did it, but most people just fix it straight down onto the roof. So let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think about that. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna do it anyway. But it can always be modified later. Anyway. Let's get this done. So after our two trips to screw fix to go back and get more washers, I then realized I didn't have my silicon gun because that was at a job site. Guess where that is? Over near screw fix. So that's the third time we've been across town now. I'm tired and hungry. So is John, bless him. He's working on something down there, but we're doing this. So first things first, I am going to get some Sikaflex all around that hole there and even in it and i am putting on one of these big washers for a spacer and then another one over here and we're going to do that all the way down the side of the van that's the first one in very exciting All right, look at that then. I am mega chuffed with that. That is fantastic. I was not gonna finish the day without getting these on. John is just trying to find uh, a socket that will fit the bolts that we have for the cross, uh, what do you call them, cross members, cross beams? And we're gonna get those on as well, because uh, we are, basically. It looks a bit gooey on the inside, but I would rather cover it in loads of Sikaflex and make sure it's watertight. No one's ever gonna see that, so it doesn't matter, does it? I'm exhausted in case you can't tell, and hungry, but these are going on, let's do it. <laughs> Right, I am so happy to get that done. We were hoping to do the solar panels today. See how we feel after we've had a bite to eat. It might be tomorrow, which will then mean a late video release, but uh, you'll know that by now because you're watching it on whatever day it is. I've been waiting to do that for ages. That feels good. Are you happy with that? <laughs> oh no, he's out walking with the camera. What could be happening? Don't worry, I'm not gonna rant about Christmas again. Not this time. I just wanted to speak to my community because you guys are wonderful and I love you and I am able to keep doing this because of you. Sorry about the cars. I love reading the comments, all the feedback I get, the help, the advice. Can you hear me over them bikes? All the help and advice you give me and the encouragement because what I'm about to do is incredibly daunting. It really, really is. I may look all uh, relaxed about it, Oh, electric cars, that's a bit quieter. I may look all relaxed about it, but trust me on the inside, 
it's a bit topsy-turvy and I'm quite apprehensive. I'm excited one minute, I'm apprehensive and scared the next. I'm about to quit my job in a couple of weeks and I'm gonna go full-time building this van and then me and the kids are gonna leave. We're gonna leave the country and we're gonna go adventuring. There's many reasons for that. I personally do not get along with society. I've only been back in society for the last sort of eight years and it's too much. It's far too much. I have many reasons for this and those who know me will know these reasons. I can't say these reasons on YouTube because I'll get demonetized, which tells you a lot, doesn't it? Freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. um, so enough said on that, I think. I cannot work all day, every day anymore just to put a roof over our heads and come home, watch TV and, you know, get one day at the weekend on a Sunday to relax uh, because I'm always busy on a Saturday, obviously doing YouTube. <laughs> so yeah, I'm done with it. There's a better life to be had. I've had better life, uh, different parts of the world, mostly in Thailand, it was fantastic. What an existence. And I wanna get back to, and I wanna show my kids what kind of a life you can have out there. It, this is not right. Despite what school tells you, despite what the TV tells you, and what your parents might have told you, and what the rest of society tells you, this is not the only way to live. In fact, it's a bit of a con, if I'm honest. So, yeah. Um, and as for the videos, I am um, wanting your feedback, actually, because I'm quite new to this. Obviously, we got monetized not so long ago, and I want to know what you think about the adverts, because I know that YouTube puts them in the middle and the front and the back. I can actually manipulate this and change it to however I want, I believe, but obviously I need them to make money and uh, if they're not there, I don't make any money. And that's how I'm hoping to, you know, feed the children <laughs> in the future. So I do need them there. So quite simply, at the end of the day, I just want to say a massive thank you to you guys. Because we wouldn't be doing it without you. Couldn't be doing it without you. So if you haven't already, please like, subscribe and share. You know how much that helps us out. Drop us a comment. Tell us anything you want about what I've just said. I'd like to hear some opinions on that. That would be great. But otherwise, we'll see you next week. Solar panels, next week, promise you. See you later.